um, back when they were made of metal. And I put a little hardware cloth in there and rub a little anchovy on there from the 99 cent store. Rub cat it down food. in between. Exactly. Go out on the. Made it up, let it set for a while. Mm -hmm. Go fishing for about 20 minutes and then yeah. and then pull the string up. I just go out on the jetty and put it between the rocks. Okay. But the most effective place to find them is any inner marine environment area, any inside a harbor, estuary, bay, where you can find rocks that are about the size of a shoebox, is to turn over those rocks. What you have to remember about them is that, number one, if it rains, you won't find them for one to two weeks. I don't know what their deal is. <laughs> like, you know, it rained, like I was trying to get them for the Fred Hall show, and I can usually find them. I, I found some that were like, you know, half the size of a dime maybe. They were really hard to find. So whenever it rains this time of year, they're really kind of hard to find. Um, the other thing is that you won't be able to get them in a midday period of time. When the sun is out and shining down straight down on those rocks, for some reason they hide and they don't come out, but when shade comes over that area. So if I was to go down, just use the Santa Ana River as an example again, and, and look along the side and go, okay, there's an area where there's some rocks I can turn over, they're not too big, I would wait until that area was in the evening, not completely in the shade, but where the sun is low enough where it's not beating down on it, because they think that the shade, the edges of shade, is a place where they can hide. And sidewinder crabs, or line shore crabs is their technical name, which are anywhere from you know the size of a dime maybe to, to this big, are very effective baits. That's the bait that was used to catch the last two um, record barred surf perch. Um, they only seem to work in the coldest winter months, so December, January, and February, because that's when fish find their way to rocks to hide, and when a big wave comes and washes those sidewinders off, that's what they're eating. If you pin one of those sidewinders on in summer and you go out on the open beach, balsa chicken, and you cast that out, you'll never get a bite on it. But in the winter, near rock structure areas, that's a fantastic bait to use. Quarter size, would you say? I, I normally like one that's about the size of a, a dime to a, to a quarter. Um, there's a fella, Sidewinder Ron, Ron Schmidt. If you look in the record books, he holds numerous records. He holds the, the uh, pile perch record. He holds the... Um, leopard shark record and so forth. And he likes to use big ones. Whenever you see him, he's carrying his, he's got a bucket in one hand, he's carrying his rod in the other hand. He's about 88 years old now, it's an incredible person. Um, but he loves to use sidewinders, probably about this thick of them. So many sidewinders that he collects, you go over to his house, you know, single now, you see him like run in front of the TV. I mean, I mean, they're like everywhere. So I said, you know, like, what's the biggest sidewinder crab that you'd use? I, I like ones that are about this big. I'd use the biggest one I could find. And I said, well, you know, they got some big claws on them. You know, they they could hurt you. He said, hey, Bill, you just grab them from the back, and when you're ready to put them on the hook, you, you break up one crab and you throw it out the water. You break off the other clamper and you throw it over there. It's kind of like getting chum out there. And you hook them on and you cast it out. So, you know, later that day we went back to the car and I thanked him for his tips he gave me. And I went to shake his hand and I looked down and he was missing a finger. So, little ones, dime size probably. You can use the big ones, but I usually use those dime ones. They're easy to handle. How do you hook a sidewinder? A sidewinder is really easy to hook. If you turn the sidewinder crab over, the bottom of it has a little a, a, a flap on the back of it. It's triangular if it's a male, it's round if it's a female. Okay, that's question 22 on the quiz. All you're going to do is take one of these damagatsu split shot hooks or owner mosquito hooks, these little hooks like this, and you're going to just poke it through from the bottom to the top. Just go right through that flap because we're keeping that flap from opening up is what we're going to do. And that's it, you don't need to hide the hook or anything at all. When those bigger fish find that, none of the smaller perch will eat those, only the biggest fish will. And when they find those, they just inhale it. All, all surf fish eat the same way. They inhale their bait and they crush it in the back of their throat and they spit it out and they eat the individual pieces. That's why like trout fishing, you got your power bait out there. You're like, I don't want the thing to hit three or four or five times, make sure it's down its throat, and then I'll set the hook. And surf fishing, if you wait for it three times, it will already have spit out the pieces of your bait, eaten all the pieces that have no hook in it, and left the one with a hook in it. So as soon as you feel that tug on your line, you reel down and lift up and you've got the fish. But that's all you have to do, just expose that hook in, and that's the way to go. Isn't it true that when you're finding sand crabs, usually by jetties, 
And, um, and we'll, 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 we'll add on to that. And when you when you find a sand crab bed, it's usually spongy. Right. It's going to be soft because yes. they're going to they're usually going to find a soft an area of soft sand to bed down in because it's easier for them to dig right. there. But yeah, sand crabs you'll find them in two places: open beach throughout the whole summer. So when the water's really warm, they'll just kind of come up everywhere. Just look down the sand and look for anomalies in the sand where it's rippling. You'll notice in the sand it's usually very flat and glassy looking. Then you find an area where it's ripply and that's where the sand crabs are. But anytime you're looking in the winter time or the beginning of the summer, the end of the summer, you look where uh, a rock jetty meets the sand right in the corner there. Or more importantly, the best place ever is underneath piers. Underneath any pier, you'll find sand crabs. They accumulate behind the pilings because as the wave breaks around the piling, it deposits soft sand. It's warmer there and there's food there, and they'll dig down there. If you went and looked right now, you'd find them right there. Think about like a trout behind a rock. It's going in the, in the exactly. slow water. Exactly, waiting for the food to come exactly. way and be safe and So I brought a couple bases with me to show you um, how to hook them and, and what I use. These are gulp sandworms. Uh, everybody who surf fishes should be familiar with these. Um, okay. Um, should be familiar with these. My only advice to you is you want to put these once you open them in a Ziploc bag and then put that in a Tupperware container or another Ziploc bag because I guarantee they will leak. So these are a good bait that I like to use on the beach to go and cast out looking for fish. Once I find fish, I will go in and change over to a natural bait. So with these guys, I'm going to use a Small hook, I'm going to use the owner mosquito hook. The top of it is flat, the bottom is like a little tail. I'm going to go right down the very center of the bait and punch it out through the side. Always got to remember to take these off your hook after you use them at the end of the day or they will turn into a rock. And then I'm going to actually pull it up on my line. So you can see this, it's as flat as it can possibly be. And that size, just on a your, small piece? Yeah, this is two and a half inch. You don't want any baits longer than this. They make a six inch and a two and a half inch. You get the six inch, just cut them in half. If it gets pulled down like this, but when you get a bite or so, or a lot of casts, that's called getting your pants pulled down. When your pants are pulled down, unless you're a teenager now, you pull your pants back up again and make sure it's as flat as you can on the hook. And that way it's not spinning as it's making its way back to shore. So that's, that's one of the baits we use, and, and of course, grubs, which are very similar in shape to this, we hook those exactly the same way. And then the, the other bait I wanted to show you are lug worms. Um, there are 3,000 worms in the marine environment, wow. um, and two of the most common that we use are lug worms and blood worms. These worms, which look a lot like the gulf worm, um, come from Korea, they come over every Thursday, and then they go through immigration and naturalization. They say the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> and then I knew that was coming. In other words, they've made it over the wall, and then they make their way to all the tackle shops here. These came about because the cost of blood worms went from about $7 a dozen to $37 a dozen. And I don't know who would put a $5 bill on and cast it out. So these worms came about, they're found in the Mekong Delta, and then the Koreans figured out how to farm them in nets. So these are a fantastic surf fishing bait. They're relatively easy to hook. This, this one is super <laughs> lively. Um, I take one of these long shank sprogans. I go right down its mouth. So of course it's got a mouth side and it's got a tail side. <coughs> and I feed it up the hook, and if I had time, I would feed it all the way up so I have maybe an inch and a half or, or so below the hook, but I'm not gonna do it this time because I don't have enough time. And then when you put it on the hook, the hook actually comes oh, out yeah. through the middle of the worm. The line, your line is coming out right out the worm's mouth. You use the entire worm and never cut it in, in half. The reason for that is if you cut it in half and cast it out, the salt water will wash all the goodness out of the inside. Yeah. So like if you went down to your local butcher and you said, hey, I want some of that Can sausage I heard about, eight bucks of sausage, it's got goat yeah. cheese and apple, and, and, and you took it home and you cut it in half and you squeezed the inside in the trash can, you ate the skin, the skin wouldn't taste very good. And that's why we use the entire worm. And I will normally get the hook all the way down here so there's about one and a half inches below the hook. 
And that way, after I catch a fish, I can pull down another one and a half inches below it, and I catch maybe three to five fish on each worm. There's 18 worms for about $7 or so. They live in your refrigerator, um, depending on whether somebody takes them out and throws them away. For, for like four whether to six. Whether your wife will let you. That's right. That's right. Why whether your wife will let you. Why we keep now the resident here? Why we keep now the resident here? What's that? Why are we keeping another resident here? That's right. That's right. We're not paying rent. So you do that instead of just treating it, in other words, bring it back out, turn it around, and go back in? Exactly. This is the way I'm going to do it, where I'm going to feed it. And the worm's actually going to be this far up my line or so, and just about an inch hanging below there. They're going to, you're going to catch a fish, they're going to bite that inch off, you're just going to pull down another inch and so. And that way you can use the whole worm. All of the goodness will stay in the worm and be able to catch three to five fish. What kind of worm Do you Love. use the Love. worm threader? Have you ever used Love. the worm threader? Yes, some people use a worm threader. I, I don't, um, from ex just from experience. But, but yes, other people, especially people in freshwater, who are used to using the worm threader are really good at it and that works perfectly fine. Can you use a freshwater worm? Um, no, we, we, you can't. We've tried um, earthworms, redworms, all those things. Um, night crawlers, it's weird. I think it's the odor that they give off is something different than that fish are used to, but we've never gotten a bite on them. But the opposite thing is true. These, these lug worms work really well for stripers, and they oh, sell yeah. tons of them at, at like the Staic Lake, Pyramid Lake, places like that. So, are there any last questions? All right, well, thank you, Mayor. Oh, uh -huh. Just one quick question on grubs. Uh -huh. Are the two inch motor oil grubs good all year long? Yep, yes. motor oil is a fantastic color, and as long as your branches are shorter, they work great. If anybody's asking questions for me, well, last question here, and then we'll be in the back. How do you start the business on blood How do I start a business on blood <laughs> Have you ever seen that show where they go out and get some blood worms? They have like these muck boots that are like this big and they call them muck -lucking. They muck lucking, yeah. Muck -lucking. And they dig with these pitchforks. It's really, really hard. But there's obviously money in it to be figured out. All right. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it.